June of last year, NASA commissioned an independent study team to examine unidentified anomalous phenomena. The International Space Station, often hailed as one of humanity's most remarkable achievements, is not immune to controversy. One of the recurring debates surrounding it revolves around the frequent sightings of unidentified flying objects, UFOs, near its vicinity. The question arises, why do UFOs seem to have an interest in the ISS? Is there something ominous on the horizon? And are authorities concealing information? In this exploration, we delve into NASA's recent detection of a substantial presence docked on the International Space Station. Strange Occurrences The International Space Station, an enormous spacecraft orbiting Earth, serves as both a habitat for astronaut and cosmonaut crews and a unique scientific laboratory. This collaborative effort between multiple nations features components assembled in space by astronauts. It maintains an orbit approximately 250 miles above Earth's surface, hurtling through space at a speed of 17,500 miles per hour, completing an orbit every 90 minutes. NASA utilizes the ISS to advance our understanding of life and work in space, paving the way for deeper space exploration. Remarkably, the ISS boasts the interior volume equivalent to two Boeing 747 jetliners or a five-bedroom house, accommodating a crew of six along with visitors. On Earth, it would weigh nearly a million pounds and spans the area of a football field, including the end zones. The station comprises laboratory modules contributed by the United States, Russia, Japan and Europe, among other components. Beyond the laboratories, Russian modules house essential systems and living quarters for crew members, while nodes interconnect various parts of the station. Solar arrays extend from the station's sides, harnessing solar energy to generate electricity, and a lengthy truss connects the arrays with radiators regulating external temperature. Robotic arms on the exterior assisted in constructing the station and aiding astronauts during spacewalks and scientific experiments. Airlocks facilitate spacewalks, while docking ports allow other spacecraft to connect to the ISS. Recent attention has focused on these docking ports due to strange occurrences at the ISS. Something far more mysterious than typical crew arrivals and human visitors has been welcomed there. Yet another set of ISS components garners attention for their capabilities, the cameras. The ISS boasts four cameras enabling enthusiasts to monitor activities around the station. In 2014, SpaceX launched four high-definition video cameras, collectively known as the Columbus Eye, inside a protective box on the Columbus lab of the ISS. These cameras, linked to the station's computer, transmit images to Earth, but they also serve purposes such as monitoring image degradation from cosmic radiation and assessing camera housing durability in space. However, allegations have arisen that NASA selectively disables these cameras during live streaming, concealing information it deems unfit for public consumption due to its unique role and responsibilities as a space agency. NASA is in a privileged position to spot unidentified objects of non-earthly origin, but suspicions linger about the agency's transparency. For instance, a fairly recent incident sparked controversy with UFO enthusiasts suspecting NASA of manipulation during a live broadcast. A video clip displayed an object entering Earth's atmosphere, followed by an abrupt termination of NASA's live feed from the ISS. While the bright object descended toward Earth, the video feed abruptly ceased. Nevertheless, such actions seem to pique an even more interest in UFOs, raising questions about what authorities might be concealing. Tic Tac Ship Another instance was that of Samdia David Fravor, a US Navy pilot with an impressive 18-year career. Throughout most of his career, his mother-in-law had a question for him. Had he ever seen a UFO? For 15 years, his answer was a firm, no. I'm not that kind of person. But that all changed one clear afternoon off the coast of California in 2004. Fravor, who was the commanding officer of a Navy squadron at the time, recounted a day when he witnessed something truly extraordinary. Oh my gosh, going against the wind. The wind's 120 knots to the west. During a routine training mission, he saw a flying object about the size of his plane. It resembled a tic-tac and moved in a way that defied any conventional explanation. This sighting left an indelible mark on him. Clear blue sky, there's no wind. And you see this tic-tac, it's just this white object. What makes this story even more intriguing is that it recently gained public attention after the Pentagon acknowledged the existence of a program dedicated to studying unidentified flying objects. UFOs. This program, 
known as the Advanced Aviation Threat Identification Program, ran from 2007 to 2012. Fravor's encounter was analyzed as part of this program, but many questions about the nature and purpose of the object remained unanswered. Fravor is certain of one thing. What he witnessed was, in his words, Yama, something not from Earth. This extraordinary encounter occurred while he was commanding the VFA-41 Black Aces, a US Navy strike fighter squadron. They were conducting an exercise off the coast between San Diego and Ensenada, Mexico, in preparation for their deployment to the Persian Gulf for the Iraq War. The object they encountered was described as a white tic-tac, approximately 40 feet long, hovering close to the water's surface. It displayed astonishing speed and agility before vanishing without a trace. What's fascinating is that despite the credibility of Fravor's account, it didn't gain much attention until 2009, when a government official approached him for an unofficial investigation. Later, he was contacted by Luis Elizondo, an intelligence officer who headed the recently disclosed Department of Defense program dedicated to UFO research. Fravor, who has shared his experience with the To The Stars Academy of Arts and Sciences, believes that encounters like his should be subject to further study. He sees the potential for revolutionary technological advancements and hopes that sharing his story will encourage people to think beyond the ordinary. Yet despite the significance of his account, Fravor has faced jokes and skepticism from friends and family. Nevertheless, Nevertheless, his story serves as a compelling reminder of the enduring fascination with UFOs and the possibility of extraterrestrial encounters. What did Thomas Mantell see? But the most baffling mystery amongst these was that of Kipit Thomas Mantell. Mantell was flying his F-51D Mustang as the flight leader of a group of pilots from the Kentucky Air National Guard's Flight C, 165th Fighter Squadron. They had been on a low-altitude training exercise, heading north from Marietta Air Force Base in Georgia, back to Louisville Standiford Field when a peculiar request came in. Godman Commander Colin Guy Hicks asked them to investigate sightings of an unidentified flying object. UFO over Godman Army Airfield. Mantell, a 25-year-old World War II hero and two other pilots, decided to ascend to 15,000 feet to intercept the mysterious object. Meanwhile, the fourth pilot continued on to Standiford Field. What's interesting is that several hundred people Central Kentucky had already spotted this UFO by 1.15 p.m. on that day. It was a partly cloudy day with calm winds and great visibility. News agencies quickly made it front page news and everyone wanted answers. The Air Material Command at Wright-Patterson Air Force Base requested meteorological records and even asked astronomers to track the positions of Venus and Jupiter in the sky on an hourly basis, trying to find a mundane explanation. However, this investigation didn't provide the answers they were looking for. Numerous calls flooded Kentucky State Police offices as people reported sightings throughout the morning and early afternoon. Godman personnel also observed the object as it traveled over Fort Knox. Two tower personnel at Godman, Tech Sergeant Quinton Blackwell and PFC Stanley Oliver described the object as resembling an ice cream filled cone or parachute. White and round on top with a conical shape underneath it was plainly visible in the afternoon sky. Mantle radioed the tower that he had spotted the object at 14,000 feet and at 15,000 feet he updated saying, the object is directly ahead of me and above me now moving at about half my speed. He continued the pursuit describing the object as metallic and of tremendous size. However, the other two pilots had to turn back at 22,000 feet due to a lack of oxygen. Mantell pressed on saying he would fly for about 10 more minutes to around 25,000 feet. But then, at 3.50 p.m., Godman Tower reported losing sight of the object.